Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Here we have a current view of the back basin there from the Old Faithful live webcam that's perched in their hotel. It is Friday, January 17th, 2024. There will be uh, no school, at least for here, Monday morning because of the inauguration. I guess a lot of places are going to be closed. Um, yesterday at 7.37 p.m., there along the Snake River Plateau near Stanley, Idaho, there was a, a magnitude 3.2 earthquake that, uh, let me show you the spectrogram. The spectrogram shows you the heat, steam, different types of gases that come up, heated water, things like that. The monitor on the far left is for the um, Norris Geyser Basin. The one in the middle is Moose Creek, Idaho. I want to show you real quick where that monitor is at. Down over here is the Snake River Plateau. This here is the monitor for Moose Creek, Idaho. You can see we got um, drawn out in yellow, different eruptions that have occurred there at Yellowstone. And this over here would be Yellowstone Lake. So let me bring it out. Over here we have um, Old Faithful Monitor right there. That's not going to light up for me. And then this is the Moose Creek, Idaho earthquake. And then the other monitor that I downloaded data from which is the far right is the western boundary which I believe is somewhere in this area um, and here we have Hedgen Lake this is an area where I've talked about before where magma's trying to come up there's a, a dike intrusion somewhere under the ground here where it's trying to come up and I've, I've talked a lot about this location showing that intrusion there's been four earthquakes in this one location. They got listed as Stanley, Idaho. Most recent was a 2.2, which was 7.2 miles in depth. A 1.8, which was 4.7 miles in depth. There's that 3.2. That was 11.4 miles in depth. And then before that was a 2.4. And that one was 3.8 miles in depth. So here's the location of that 3.2 right along the Trans Chalice Fault System. Those of you that have been with me for a while realize that it actually extends all the way up there to Canada. It is a northeast trending fault and they have several eruptive centers. Um, one of them they call the Chalice Volcanics. I have three of the earthquakes mapped out. Here's the location of the 2.2 uh, and then the other one, let's see, where is that it? The 1.8? No, that's a different one. Okay. Um, yeah, it is. It's the 1.8. Okay. Right there. And I got different um, fields drawn out, different volcanic fields. Um, not far from here, along the... Uh, same fault system that's when they where they had the magnitude 6.5 that was on march 31st i believe of 2020 this whole fault system is an extension system where we got stretching going um all the way up to the east and it goes all the way down to the snake river plateau which is here and as i said all the way north to british columbia it's, uh, it's it's a pretty wide fault system. Let me bring this out and bring it all the way up. That's as far as I marked it here to the Canadian border. So here's the location of the 3.2. And it's really interesting about this location. Over here to the east is the, um, the area of Chalice and its volcanism. Uh, lots of ancient volcanic activity uh, towards the south of the uh, chalice fault system um, they have lava there that is about 700 meters thick so that would be about 2300 feet thick of, of uh, lava you can see can you see the two red zones 
for the chalice trans chalice fault system okay but what's also interesting about this is that this volcanism didn't start up didn't occur until after the uh, asteroid hit the earth wiped out the dinosaurs and we went into an ice age yeah it's like a double whammy for the earth so we had the asteroid that wiped out all the different types of dinosaurs and mammals anything that basically weighed more than 120 pounds a lot of the birds survived and some of the smaller sea mammals such as uh, seahorses puffer um, puffer fish carp crocodiles um, smaller sea turtles so when the asteroid hit it actually made it easier for the smaller animals to th survive and diversify i've talked about how all these different fault zones have uh, begun to reactivate so here at moose creek idaho that monitor you can see all the heat the steam the gases the heated water that came up from this earthquake looking at the seismic signature of this earthquake um yeah that's magma movement see how it's up and down and wavy and i did a report yesterday about how yellowstone the magma is moving to the northeast section of um, the caldera itself let me bring this over now this is sharpened points so as the magma came up uh, creating pressure on the fault zone there yeah we got some popping of the fault and let's bring it over a little bit farther yeah it it was all caused by magma movement and you can see we got magma movement afterwards let's see we got some small earthquakes here we got one right there at um 310 universal time it's got a long p wave on it the p wave is the first wave of the earthquake because it goes right through the earth and then afterwards it would have the s wave which would be the surface wave and this is all popping right here it was probably along the uh, trans chalice fault system it's not being reported let's see and then we got some more let's see later right there we got another one now that one is at 8:45 universal time when it starts out again a long p wave that one also is not being reported i fear it because of the length from the p wave to the s wave is probably in the same location that one is probably a 1.96 okay and then this one here again a long p wave at about 11:44 universal time also not being reported it's kind of like okay if no one is around to see the tree in the forest fall down does it get reported no it doesn't so even with this um, other earthquake this one right here the three um the 3.2 no one said they even felt it so more than likely they did not report these smaller ones okay 1144 that one was a little bit larger it comes in as a magnitude 2.03 then we got this one at 1236 oh that i'm not going to try with that that is a slow moving tremor yeah fault movement probably for the trans chalice fault zone and this is what it was showing when i pulled the files you can see there's probably one little red one right near popping of the rock yeah we got two popping right there and we'll go to the spectrogram yeah a lot of heat currently coming up when i pull the files right over here and i'll pull it all the way over okay again this is moose creek idaho let me close this out yeah let's take a look at the uh, seismic signature yeah slow moving tremors readjusting after this there's some more marked in red right there more popping yep more heat coming up trans chalice fault zone is really active today four earthquakes within the last 24 hours this here is the borehole for the norris geyser basin 
and this is that magnitude 3.2 it actually picked it up all the way over there um, the borehole being a deep well under the ground only picks up uh, what happens under the ground it doesn't pick up anything that say it was stampeding buffalo or snowmobiles or snowmobile removal equipment it would not pick any, anything up like that only what happens under the ground I see we got a small one right here at 932 it's got a small P wave on it nothing extreme so somewhere within this location of the Norris Geyser Basin and there's the uh, steam and gases and water that came up yeah toxic gases not being reported that probably is a small one a 1.17 going back to the uh, seismic signature yeah I see Torlinos Torlinos are indication that magma is on the move and of course because Yellowstone is recharging yeah we got three definite right there try and make those larger yeah see that that's rounded yep magma movement Torlinos 1413 again another earthquake not being reported some small Torlinos we got three small ones there a little bit larger right there and that comes in as a magnitude 1.42 there's a lot of popping going on here that was picked up at the borehole let me go to the spectrogram all those marked in red would be signatures that were picked up and then sent to the University of Utah telling them hey you guys we had some small quakes and they're having it because Yellowstone is recharging that magma moving to the northeast he yeah, is putting pressure can't uh, I don't know how big you can see this I wish I could make it bigger other than doing this but then yeah see up and down wavy lines magma on the move may magma ascending into the system as I stated before yesterday when you see a square block right here where it's cropped the signature is cropped at the bottom and the top that is when they're adjusting the monitors I don't know why maybe so we don't see the earthquakes as much and I don't know if you can see all the um, little red lines sometimes they're hard for me to find all the there's one oh we got a couple here all the popping that's going on there at Yellowstone and this like I said this is a well so it's not picking up anything that hits the ground above this is what's happening under the ground and they don't know what the effects are going to be as the magma chamber moves um, north east of its current hot spot will it meet up to an area where the lithosphere is thinner so there's more chance of an eruption I lost a lot of my data when Google Earth reset itself but how many of you remember um, several years ago there by Fern Lake let me bring this out the northeast section there's Yellowstone Lake there's Fern Lake when they were re reviewing satellite photos and seeing that there was an area that all the trees had died from the ground up because of the hot gases that had killed the trees that was discovered in 2018 from satellite images a bit farther to the south is Turn Lake and also to this these images are from 2015 but zooming in right there you can see all the dead trees so they were dead even back in 2015 but what had happened the heat had come up from under the ground and literally made them into char charcoal so even though they're telling us right now that they know that the thermal area the hot spot is moving to the northeast they have known that for years and only now letting us know they really try to downplay it and they don't talk about this hot spot this paper I believe is from harvard.ed and it says uh, 
Yellowstone National Park contains many dynamic thermal areas. Ooh, wow, cool. That are the surface expression of the deeper magmatic system. Recently, we discovered that the emergence of a new thermal area located near the northeast margin of the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome near Turn Lake and a previously mapped thermal area that was about 33,300 M2. I don't know what M2 start, um, means. Maybe you guys do. Um, let me know. Area and located in the back country. It was discovered in 2018 as a sparsely anonymous area of warm pixels in a Landslot Landsat 8 nighttime thermal infrared infrared image. So it showed up um, using this infrared um, satellite showing that it was heated up. The ground had heated up there. Do I sound excited? No, I'm just mad. I'm mad that they known that the hot spot's been slowly moving northeast and this was probably one of the first indications that something was going on. They say they don't know what to expect in the future. Um, maybe about a year ago, um, Bob Smith was saying that they hope when the next eruption occurs that it's going to be about the size of Mount St. Helens. It would probably be a little bit larger, but they expect there would not be a smaller eruption, anything smaller than what happened at Mount St. Helens. It would be that size or larger. And his comments came out shortly after uh, the reports about this new hot spot at Yellowstone came out. So here we have a photograph um, somewhere around 2018 showing the dead trees that are on the ground and then the satellite thermal image of that location showing that the d the darker color is cool and yeah from yellow and orange um, that is hot see how black those trees are and now pull it over to the thermal image so 2015 you can see that they have died a lot of them are laying on the ground but they're not black like they were afterwards you know they still got some light color um, you know being killed off from the ground up from the uh, gases so you know we got all this extra activity along the trans chalice fault zone the last time there was an eruption along the snake river plateau was about 2000 years ago and i keep saying how the magma is coming up in the yellowstone hot spot it's moving under the ground along underneath where the uh, snake river plateau is at what else are they covering up only now giving you little breadcrumbs about how the hot spot is moving to the northeast when they've known that for years so what are your thoughts put your comments down below thank you very much for sharing please share thank you very much for your support you guys are absolutely wonderful you are a blessing angels in disguise yeah i am completely humbled by your generosity in supporting my channel and supporting me, my work always be prepared for a disaster thank you again and god bless you all thank you